Today on Relax Mind, we're going to be talking about the abundant mindset. What is it? How do you get an abundant mindset if you happen to be looking at life in a more scarce uh, environment? And where, why is an abundant mindset so important to you? We're going to talk about that today on Relaxed Mail, episode number 14. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail, a podcast that helps men change their relationship with themselves. I am your host, Brian, and I am a men's life and mindset coach who is here to help you understand that you don't have to suffer at your own expense. You can live your dream, and I encourage you to set, then pursue your goals. So join me as I change the mindset and attitudes of men so that they can be the leaders of their families and their destiny. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right, so today we are talking about the power and the the influence that you have in your own life when you have what's called an abundant mindset. Now, the abundant mindset was actually originally coined uh, by Stephen Covey in uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People because you have people who see life in an abundant form and you have people who see life in a very scarce form. Uh, and scarcity really causes people, it causes people a lot of problems. But uh, we're going to be talking about that next week. This week, though, I wanted to talk about, I want to start off with a positive bang because abundant mindset is one of those mindsets that it, when you have it, it opens so many doors for you. It uh, allows so much, gives you so much more power, so much more uh, drive that it's kind of you when you see other people who don't have it you're like going dude dude wrong way to you know you start becoming almost an uh, an evangelist for for abundant mindsets so let's dive in to the what is an abundant mindset a person with an abundant mindset is best defined by Stephen Covey you know that you are responsible for your actions and their results and so you you don't see life as coming at you so much to take stuff away, but it's coming at you to give you stuff. A person with an abundant mindset has, you could almost best describe them by their, the motto that they have. There is more where that come from, whether it's ideas, money, other resources, you know, like food or even like toilet paper. You, uh, a person with an abundant mindset thinks and looks at the world from the 30,000 foot view as opposed to being in the middle of the forest. So they can see the whole forest in spite of all the trees because they see, they see what's going, they see what's on top of that hill and they see what's down the hill and they see everything that's going on. They look at life in a bigger, in a bigger picture. People with abundant mindsets are also generally a lot happier. And that's just because they aren't worried about what they don't have. They're, Happy that they have what they have and they are actually a lot, are willing to, to share. They have, it's like I used it in the last episode. It, you have a cup or a bowl of popcorn is the example I used. They see that, yeah, the bowl is might be running low, but that's okay. There's more where that come from. There's a whole box of, of great value popcorn in the uh, extra butter popcorn in the cabinet. I'll just make myself another bag. And it's basically a, con it's just a, a mind, an abundant mindset is a concept that just helps a person believe that there are enough resources and success out there for everyone to have. They, they don't see things in a very limited fashion. They see that life is great and grand and that there's not a, not a, a, a scarcity of food. Just you've got food. There's more food out there. You just got to go out and find it. So how does an abundant mindset actually put you in control? Uh, this, this type of mindset, uh, first off gets rid of all the worries. Most people stop and and set without actually making any any movement any progress or making any advances in their life or 
or other parts of their uh, any parts of their life they they don't they're not able to make the progress that they would they they desire out of the fact that they don't fear that they don't have enough scarcity mindset is a very fear based uh, mindset they see that uh, people with uh, an abundant mindset they actually see that uh, jobs that they're approaching new endeavors that they are fixing to go into hold a po- hold a possibility of being a good thing yeah there might be some problems there may be a an issue that comes up but they're going they will they're not going to sit there and worry and about what might happen they're not going to cross they're going to cross that bridge when they get to it if you have a, a an abundant mindset you're you're more focused in on what needs to be done to go forward, not what has, what is there holding you back. So you're, you may be wanting to take a trip across the country. And so you're taking that, you're getting everything ready. Well, a person with a scarcity mindset might go, well, those tires are really looking horrible. And, or even though, you know, you've still got a good 10,000 plus miles left on them that you're just, you kind of look at them and you look at all the, everything that, Though it's it's good, it's going to get you there. It's going to get you back. You're looking at well, that's a possible problem. While an abundant mindset person is going, well, okay, I ah, need to get the oil change. So let's go get the oil change. Let's they they know what resources are available. They see that uh, they they're not beholden to to fear. People with abundant mindsets also because they approach life. Uh, uh, projects and 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 obstacles in a m- lot more easier fashion they actually are not afraid of failing they know that they're walking into a uh, into a new environment into a new project and not knowing what all the all the details are but they understand that they have a growth mindset along with it and the, with that growth mindset and the the thought of there's no worry. You're going to understand that you actually can grow from that experience. You're going to learn something. You bounce off the wall. You're going to say, Oh, well, there's a wall. I should have, you know, should have walked three feet to the left and I would have gone right through the door because when you have an abundant mindset, you also have the, and you have this, this 30,000 foot view. You actually are able to see the why a lot easier. You're able to see that, Hey, I need to go. I know, I know how to get to the goal. Now I've got, I'm a lot more clear. They are, they vision themselves and the results to be bigger. And it's not just, well, I'm going to see if I can make a hundred dollars today. Their vision, their, their goals and stuff are so much bigger because they believe they have so much at their disposal. They, they're not concerned so much about what they don't have. They, they know that they have plenty, and so they're going to go and take the the steps needed to go on ahead and take action. They see that their their actions are needed to actually be able to achieve whatever goal they have. While you know, a scarcity person, they're gonna they're gonna sit and they're gonna worry and they're gonna plan and they're gonna wor- they're gonna kind of poke around a lot more. They're not gonna get as much action taken care of because they're always worried that they don't have enough there. I I'm why am I a person like, like a person who is uh who's bought a house. If they take a, an abundant person will get everything fixed as soon as uh, when they see the problem and they will find ways of gathering the resources, knowing that they're actually going to cash back and get that money back when they turn around several years down the road and sell the house because they've, installed a deck and have a, a a swimming pool they may even have a hot tub they have all these all these these factors that make the uh make the the job a lot easier they see that they see wh- the why and they look further down the road as opposed to what a person with a scarcity mindset actually does the biggest advantage to having a mind a po- abundant mindset i can't talk today <laughs> is that your you take responsibility for your actions. You know you've made a mistake. You know and you recognize that uh investing in a the reason why you are now completely broke is because you invested into a a a, a bad stock. You 
didn't take all the uh, all the uh, the information at hand, and you didn't apply to every situation. And so you understand that, yeah, I'm in this hole because I dug the hole. I'm in this hole because I wasn't paying attention to where I was walking. I'm have this problem X, Y, Z because of my actions. And so you take a lot more actions. You don't have that victim mindset, which is a very dangerous mindset to have because you don't make progress when you are portraying yourself as the victim. If when you're seeing yourself as a victim, you're going to sit and wonder how could this happen to me? It's not my fault. It's uh, how, why am I, why am I being punished for something that's not my fault? Well, in all reality, 99% of the time, it is your fault. Person, even a person with lung cancer. Well, there's a good chance that it probably was because they were smoking. That type of thing. So what does a person with, uh, uh some of the items that a person with my, uh, an abundant mindset has is they actually have clarity of the, on, on purpose. They're, they know what they've got to do. They see where they, they're, since their goals are laid out, they are very goal oriented. Abundant mindset people are very goal oriented. And so they have these mile markers laid out so that they know that they are making progress. If they see that they haven't made a, made any progress, well, then again, they know that they haven't made any progress and they know why they haven't made any progress and they take the responsibility for the particular, uh, uh, particular incident that held them back. Choices are another, because there are so many resources, a, an abundant mindset of person will actually believe that they have a lot more choices. They see that they can, everything that is going on with them is because of a choice they made. And even though they made one choice and it came to a dead end, doesn't mean that they are out of choices. They have an abundance of choices. They come from a place of, like I said, they come from a, a mindset of, of abundance and, and plenty. And so there's, there's no limit in choices. They can choose this, this, and this. And because they're have a, a higher view of what they're wanting to do, that also means that they're, if they have to completely change course somewhere along the way, they have no problem doing that because they see the a path that will take them to what their actual destination is. They see also when it comes to a problem, an abundant mindset of person doesn't go, Oh hell man, really? I don't have time for this. This is, Oh, why is this happening to me? It's there. They don't see problems as being problems. They just see a problem as an event that's looking for a solution. It's an opportunity looking for, for an answer there. So they, when our problem crops up, they, all right, well, let's see what we can do on correcting this problem. And they, they can shift to that event if it needs to, if it needs to be addressed right then, or they can see, all right, well, I don't have to worry about this now and we will set it off. It's coming up. We know it's coming up. So we're going to make plans to, to counteract whatever that issue is. You know, it, it, for a good example would be, you know that the river's flooding. Okay. Then we know that, thank goodness, I've got a sand pit in the backyard. Let's start filling up sandbags and pillowcases and start making, you know, a, a, a berm for the, to hold the water back so it doesn't get into the house. So they see problems and they are as, as, uh, an event, like I said, that's looking for a solution. I'm repeating myself. <laughs> They also believe that there's enough going around to go around. Doesn't mean that they are just going to throw their, their wealth of whatever the, their resources that they have. They're not just going to throw it about, uh, higgledy biggledy, but they're going to be, they're, they're not going to worry about what they don't have. So if there's plenty to go around, they're looking at, uh, they're going to freely offer ideas. People in, in masterminds, uh, often have abundant mindsets because they're not going to be, they're going to want to share their advice. They're going to want to share their insight. They're going to want to share their thoughts and opinions because it helps everybody overall. So there's, so there's a, a sensation of there being enough. Of a thought, they have a thought. It's not like that's going to be the last thought they ever had in their in their in their life. They had a thought. They can have another thought. 
If that doesn't work, well, then let's try this third thought. And so there's a lot of means and ways of being able to actually get to the solution because they're not limited by what they're thinking. They're not limited by the, the money. And it's not like they are a person with an abundant mindset is rich. No, people, broke people, uh, who are in, uh, say, uh, a lot of the, the migrants you heard of, of in the 20th century, a lot of them came with what? $19 in their pocket and, and the shirt on their back. So what did they do? Well, they didn't just go, well, I'm broke, I'm poor, and the world's out to get me. They didn't have that scarcity mindset. They had an abundant mindset. They're like, well, this is the land of opportunity. Let's go and let's take, let's grab our, grab our opportunity because we're in the middle of it. And so a lot of times those migrants who come over and with only $19 in their pocket are able to turn around and suddenly they own a store. They are very affluent in their in their neighborhood because they have taken the time, taken the process, and they have an abundant mindset. They think everything there's there's no limit to their possibilities. Abundant mindset of people also take time to focus only on what's working. While people with scarcity, a lot of times they actually are more obsessed about why something's not working. And again, that's that victim mindset. They 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 wonder why why can't I do this. I, and they focus and they keep trying and do the, uh, you know, the, the definition of insanity. They keep trying the same thing over and over and over again. And all they, it does is give, give them the same result back. Well, because there is different avenues and there's plenty of avenues to an abundant mindset of person, they'll try one door. Well, okay, let's go down the next door. Oh, nope. That one's locked too. Go down the third one. Hey, this one's open. And they go on through. When they come across something and they find a find a dead end and there's it's whatever they're trying at doesn't work, they're not going to try to to keep trying to bash themselves against it. They're going to accept the fact that hey, this isn't working. Let's try something different then. And so they actually, because they see that there are other possibilities, they are easily able to change. They're not afraid of change. They're not afraid that something's uh, becoming uh, is going to be. You know, that change is, is scary. They see it as uh, it's another opportunity for me to do something. So taking the, uh, so taking a, an abundant mindset to a problem allows you to be able to take that, the, the needed swap, the needed change and go to an area that a, a scarcity person wouldn't be willing to go because they don't fear abundant mindset of people don't fear change. Well, a person with scarcity, they fear change because they don't have anything to start with. And now all of a sudden they don't, they're not prepared for the new change that's coming along. And so it becomes really, really scary because they, a, an abundant mindset of person also has a, an abundant set of, of opportunities abound to them. There's, they don't have a problem. With the change, uh, well, I was already talking about the change, but uh, they don't. They are more active on taking care of that change. They're going to jump on an opportunity as it becomes available, as opposed to, well, I'm still working on this. I know this. I know this magic engine that turns water into energy is going to work. I've got, but I haven't been able to get it to work in the past thirty years. Something's not right. Uh, I'm, I will get this figured out. While a person with uh, with an abundant, well, just uh, take that, uh, would understand, okay, that's, that's a hobby. We'll tinker on that anytime I come up with a solution while, um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this gas powered engine as of right now. And when the, the change finally comes along, they're, you know, they're, they're okay with that, with that swap. Abundant mindset are all people are also incredibly grateful. This is one of those things where it almost goes, uh, hand in hand. You, can't have a scarcity mindset if you've got so much that you're grateful for. Gratitude is one of those uh, emotions that and and that actually keeps you uh, in a an abundant mindset. That's one of the best ways if you ever want to try to become uh, abundant mindset is be be grateful. Write a gratitude journal. That is the key all the, I, I don't write gratitude journals in my gratitude journal all the time but whenever i find that i am having a problem getting over a particular issue i will sit down and i will make a list of 5 10 things that i am 
incredibly grateful for. And that's, you know, things from the service that I had from, uh, from a waiter, which, uh, or even, uh, we actually here, in, uh, where I live, we actually had our, our, one of our favorite Mexican food restaurants catch on fire and burn down. And so they're closed now. So I could actually take that and I could be grateful that I got to eat there. I got to enjoy their fajitas and I got to, in, uh, enjoy the, the atmosphere and, and talk with the, the great waitresses and waiters that they had at, uh, at Pedro's Mexican Grill. So what does, how does abundant mindset help in everyday life? Well, with that, you are more readily going to be able to be seen as the go-to person. So if you're an abundant mindset person, you're not going to be hoarding all your, all your, your thoughts and your good ideas. You're going to, as you're working with whatever team you're working with, you're going to be giving those ideas out. You're not going, if you see something coming up, you're going to point out, it's like, dude, this is, this is fixing to uh, fall apart right here. Instead of going, well, we stand back and go, Hey, get this person out of the way. And then I might be able to have a chance, let him screw up. And then I'll have a chance to, to take the, uh, take the reins and get this company back on track. You're that's having that type of thought is a scarcity mindset because you see somebody who's taken your spot instead of you helping them, uh, helping the, per, your boss become a, become an even better boss. So they get promoted and, and allow you to, that then allows that uh, position to open up. Uh, you're, you freely share your thoughts and your ideas and, and even the resources. So, you know, you got somebody who is, uh, always needing a pin. Well, you have no problem because you, you like pins for whatever reason. And so you have a nice collection of those really ultra fine tips that make very smooth and concise lines. And it's, it, you just love writing with them. And so you even share those good pins with, uh, with the guy who perpetually, for whatever reason, seems to like to eat his pins instead of, instead of using them. So, but you have no problem sharing out those, your resources, your ideas, your thoughts, because those are all, uh, you an eternal wellspring in your in your view if you have an abundant mindset uh you're also easier to get along with because you're you are sharing your resources uh you're not hoarding them you're not you're not holding on to your popcorn and not sharing your popcorn because that's you've only got your, that bowl of popcorn and you're you've got a very limited supply well no you don't uh have a limited supply you have you you freely share and because you share and you are active with helping people and you like to make sure that uh, you have no problem with the changes people look to you for advice and for information and and for insight on different events that are happening within the country the country the the uh county the <laughs> uh, in the company or even in your family you become a go-to person because you have an abundance of of thought and abundance of, of even positive energy because you like to share and you like, and, and things like that people actually find you be a lot more fun to be around uh you even take uh failures in stride you're like oh well, let's not, didn't try that. Well, I didn't, I kind of screwed that one up, didn't I? And you point out, you take response because you're taking responsibility for your actions and for what, uh, your failures, you can make fun of yourself and you can take, be light with the, uh, the upsets that happened because you are more of a positive influence on the group that you're with, they look at you and, and are, and see you as a better person and a more human person, as opposed to someone who is being like Schmeagle and hoarding that, uh, his precious over there and you know, over there in the corner. So you also become, uh, more proactive in the different events. You, you see that, uh, you know, something's happening. You actively will stop whatever you're doing to go assist the, the other people. You say you've got, uh, uh, you got a guy who is, uh, who's working on a car and, uh, he's about to, I don't know. I'm not a car person, but, uh, you about to knock the, uh, the brake disc off and it's going to land on his foot. So you run over there and you grab, you proactively help him by, you know, supporting the, uh, the, the, the break, the, the disc break because you don't want it to fall on his foot and you don't hurt him. You're being a, you're more supportive and you're a more team player because you have no reserves. You're not worried about somebody running off with your ideas or, or ta- saying that, uh, not giving you credit. If they don't give you credit, oh, okay. Well, that's, that's fine. I've got, you've got, there's more where that come from. 
And so, so, and again, as I mentioned before, you easily are able to jump from one thing to another. So, so the transition of, of change isn't a, a scary thing for you. So you, you have no problem say finding out that trying to, trying to fly by gluing a whole bunch of feathers to your arms isn't going to work. But if you build a wing, with a with proper aerodynamics, you see that that you can you can sh- more easily shift over to that uh, to that line of thinking. You have no problem swapping between uh, shifting gears to to use a trucking term. You can easily shift gears down and downshift if you need to slow up. You have no problem with that pati- change and the and the changes that life throw at you on a daily basis are just you know you kind of roll with the punches. So if how do you Actually, develop a, a a an abundant mindset. If you say you you realize it's like, wow, I really do have a bit of a scarcity mindset. Well, admitting that you have enough scarcity mindset is the first step to an abundant mindset because you are, you know, as I mentioned, taking a active role in your and taking responsibility for your actions and and your your thought patterns. So first is pay attention to what you're thinking. What are those thoughts that go through your head? A good way to uh, to become more aware of your thoughts is to try some mindful meditation. You're like, oh god, not this again. Yes, yes, this again. I I don't do mindful meditation every day. I I do like to practice it though. And there's a lot of times I will set my uh, my Calm app on and just do the little ten minute exercises that they do, just because I find it interesting the, to clear my mind, focus on my breathing. And within, you know, a minute or so, I'm realizing that my brain is running around doing, you know, running around like a, like a chicken with its head cut off. And I've got to wrangle it back and bring it back and for, force it to pay attention. But as you see those different weird thoughts that you bring up, you also notice other thoughts that are jumping up. And so you can wrangle those down and you can start to control how you're thinking and, you pay attention to what you're thinking as a as a big result of it, and so if you're looking, if you pay attention to what you're thinking, you can come, you can start to notice, hey, this is a really, uh, this is coming from a place of scarcity as opposed to this is coming from a place of abundance. Your your thoughts may be based in fear, and so you can actually kind of go down that rabbit trail and find the origin of that, that fear. Maybe for me, I had a, uh, I still have a bit and I'm, I'm still working on it, but I have a scarcity of food and it's not that I don't have food in the, in the house. No, we had a wonderful spaghetti dinner last night. And before that, last weekend, I actually even had my, my favorite tater tot casserole. Doesn't mean that I don't have food in the house, but whenever I was driving uh, and hauling sand, there were many times where we would be stuck out in out in the country, away from everything, because the well's down, and I'm in line, and you know I'm down to a bag of chips, and we may be there for a day and a half. Well, okay, that's really going to suck, and so you have you I developed a scarcity mindset, and so what I would end up doing is like the night before I took off, I would stuff myself stupid. Not that that, you know, uh, it be, not because I would be able to hold that food in my stomach down the road. No, because it would, it's going to digest just as fast. I'll end up, you know, getting rid of the day, the next day, uh, when I wake up. But it's, it was a, I was approaching the, the, the problem in a scarce mindset with a new job that, I, a trucking job that I'm, I'm doing right now. I have. A meal every day. I have actually I have two meals. I usually eat uh, eat a sandwich uh, for lunch because it's just really easy to slap together, n- snarf it down, and carry on my way. And then whenever I shut down for the night, I stop try to stop at a truck stop, and I go in and I've got some nukable uh, food, and I can microwave, come out with a hot meal, and and enjoy that. And so I'm not eating as much because I don't have as much of a scarcity mindset now. I do still have a problem of whenever I open up a bag, I eat that bag until it's gone. Um, and that's a, that's an issue with a bit of scarcity, but at the same time, that's, there's other, <laughs> other things that I'm trying to, trying to take care of on that. Um, another way is to ask if it is, uh, whenever you have, do have a thought or you ha- say something that sounds that you believe might be a, a, of a scarcity mindset. Ask yourself, is that coming from a place, place of fear? 
uh, or are you are you talking about having to you know are you is that that thought because you're feeling that you're not going to have enough in a later uh, later date. And a lot of times when you start practicing that, you'll start to understand and start seeing, oh, yeah, that was really a, a, a scarcity mindset that I was having with that, with food. I, I understand that now. Uh, in the time I wasn't, I started, was, I was beginning to understand that I was having a scarcity mindset. And I, but it still would fester up as, you know, instead of eating two cups of soup, I would eat, you know, three because I had them there. They were available to me. Or anytime I saw, uh, anytime I stopped to, uh, at a truck stop, I would go run in and grab a couple of hot dogs and eat those. So I was eating like three, four times a day, even though I had food in the truck. Also, you want to become, start working to be more grateful. Be grateful for everything. Be grateful for the sun. Be grateful for the rain. Grateful for the even the wind that's messing up your hair. Be grateful for all that stuff. Be grateful for the fact that you have a roof over your head. You actually be grateful for the fact that you were able to open your eyes this morning. Who knows? There's so many people who they close their eyes and then they never wake back up. It is uh, the, the, you never know when you're, when you're, uh, Ticket's going to be punched. So you want to be grateful for everything, the air you breathe. We, so many people focus in on, we're dying of pollution. Well, no, actually we're not because America's air is actually cleaner than it's been in the past 50 years. So it, we're to, to be, to be screaming that we're in a, in an ecological, uh, uh, disaster is if you apply a, a little bit of thought to it, you see, no, it's not. Yeah, there might be some issues that some isolated areas that we can really focus in on and might need to have a bit of help. But sitting there running around like our hair's on fire is not going to fix the problem. Sitting there screaming at people and forcing people to, to, you know, to use a, to use a, a reusable bag that is just disgusting because it's had, you know, the blood that soaked through the uh, your meat soaked into the bag, and you've got vegetables and crumbs and everything else, and it's just you know it's just this festering petri dish that you're putting all your food in may not be you know the best the best idea. Plastic bags, okay, yeah, they float around, they're kind of an annoyance, but they do decompose down the road. While and yet at the same time, we had one of the best ecologically friendly. Uh, bags available up until the 80s and that's because people started throwing a fit about you know about the we us cutting down too many trees though we have more trees now they ignore the fact that there was more trees now than there were even back uh back 100 years ago so you can see how scarcity and, and abundance are fight in, in, amongst each other so you can see and pay attention to if it is something coming from from fear you can and if it's uh not Start trying to uh, to build your gratitude because your gratuity is one of those uh, is one of the biggest pump primers for for an abundant mindset that there actually is. Try to think big is another way uh, instead of just going. All right, well, I need to do this. Well, it's like no. What's the grand picture that you want to have? Why do you want to have? You know, want to change the the staircase to your house? Is it just because? It's it's in a really awkward spot, or is it because you can make something better than what was originally put in there? So try to think big. Where instead of going, oh, I just want to start a business. No, no, try going bigger. I want to start. I'm trying to have a, a hundred million dollar coaching business. That's what I want to do. So I'm not going to go small. I'm not just going to have enough money to where I can. I'm able to just be at home. I'm going to have enough money to where I can. Take men and, and go overseas and, and do, uh, do mindset exercises while walking the Camino. That's one of the great, uh, thoughts and one of the great trips that I, I have in store and have in mind for, uh, for the men who are a part of the relaxed male. Focus on what is actually going right in your life. Pay attention to, and because if you, if you notice that you're trying something that failed and trying something that failed, instead of making any changes, you that's more there's a good chance you're actually coming from a uh, from a scarcity oriented uh, mindset so pay attention to to your actions are and why do you keep trying the same thing over and over though you know it's going to fail and then finally offer words of appreciation when you uh 
are grateful and tell the tell the waiter thankful. You might even go as far as make a little thank you card and write that. Uh, thank your uh, your waiter and uh, and give them a, a thank you card as just a an additional little uh, little gift that make that uh, that gratitude is uh, is one of those diseases that spreads. And everybody likes the fact that it spreads from person to person because when you're happy and you're grateful, you make that person's day a lot better, which makes him a lot more grateful for his day. He may have been having a cruddy day, might have gotten stiffed on a couple of uh, couple tables, and now because you told him uh, how grateful for you were, you were, and you actually gave him a twenty dollar tip for a, for a cup of coffee. Wow! All of a sudden, his life is a lot better, and he's going to be willing to to spread that love around a little bit more. Anyhow, there's a few tips and what the abundance mindset and how it can become more useful to you. So uh, I want to thank you again for listening. Uh, take the time. I would really like to, I'm going to kind of start focusing in on, on this a bit more while, uh, while we, I do have my live event still is going on. Uh, if you are interested in, in having a change in mindset, maybe you're suffering from a scarcity mindset and you need some help from some, uh, from me and maybe some other guys who, uh, to, to get onto a more abundant mindset, the, the camp and coach live event is going to be a great way to do that. If you, but I would also going to ask you to, uh, you go over to, uh, relaxmail.com forward slash, uh, Subscribe, and in there you're going to see uh, iTunes. Or actually, correction, let's do it this way. If you go to uh, relaxmail.com forward slash iTunes, if you have a iTunes account, go in and leave a rev- uh, rate it and leave a review. Let's see if we can kind of get a few more people to start listening. And that, would, uh, if you can do that, that would be great. If not, you could also go to uh, podchaser.com and uh, podchaser.com forward slash relaxed mail. And there you can leave a rating and review, and that will also help us climb up uh, on some of the some of the charts also. So anyhow, those are my two big calls to action for the day. I want to thank you very much for listening. You take care, and we will see you next week. Till then, stay awesome.